Man, oh man. What a day, what a day. Nice old day. You feel me? Gotta get set for the podcast and everything. Let's get it, man. I'm excited. Nice new furniture, man. Hey! <laughs> You know, um, being diagnosed with a disability at the age of three, you know, I said, um, you know, it was very, very challenging, you know, and, and that wasn't really, you know, until I got older, you know, being a young kid, man, I mean, like, I couldn't comprehend, you know, what a disability was. I mean, besides the fact that probably is just, you know, sitting there just wondering, like, damn, you know, you, you were the only kid and, you know, now, you, you know, you, you got the struggles to go through. You know, I was told throughout majority of my life that, man, God, you know, give them battles, man, to the strongest people in life, man, who's willing to, you know, put it on their back and carry it, man. And throughout my life, man, I've been, you know, carrying the fact that, you know, I'm, I, I live a disabled life, you know. I mean, I'm in a wheelchair, but do I let that stop me from doing what I'm doing each and every day? No, I do not. You know, I talk about how, yes, the disability, you know, um, as a, as a growing, getting in as a teen, you know, was very, very depressing and stuff like that. And, but when I was, when I was, you know, a young whippersnapper, man, it was, it was all, it was all cool, you know, it was all cool and, and stuff. But, you know, uh, with my condition and not knowing and uncertainty, a lot of, you know, stuff when I was young in and out the hospital and stuff, you know, vivid memories and stuff and got to stay a week or got to stay two weeks and stuff and, you know, and the family be calling over the phone. So, you know, looking back at stuff, like I said, man, I'm doing this documentary because I feel as though like a, a first, you know, chapter in my life, you know, came to a close and another chapter in my life is just beginning. You know, I, I look at it like that. Um, I got some amazing stories and amazing stuff that I've been through in my life that, you know, not define me, but made me, you know, who I am today, you know, who I am today. Um, growing up in D.C., man, uh, was wonderful. I went to school here um, in D.C. Uh, throughout elementary, junior high, high school. I went to Riveters Elementary School in uh, Northeast, Northeast D.C., man. Um, yeah, it was a fun, you know, and actually, you know, my fiance right now is that's where, you know, we met in River Turns. And speaking of River Turns, man, River Turns was, you know, amazing, man. It just brought out so many, you know, great memories, man. You know, far as a little kid, you know. Um, on the episode before, I talked about, you know, having father figures and, and talk about my biological father. You know, at River Turns, man, when I got there in 1999, you know, I was just eight years old, man. And, you know, after losing my stepdad, you know, at the age of seven, you know, and I'm like, you know, you, you don't really have, you know, father figures, but you have, you know, certain ones that you always, you know, cherish you know, to your heart and close to you. You know, um, when I got to River Turns, man, it was one guy who stuck out, man, so much, man. His personality stuck out. Everything stuck out about him, you know. Um, you know, me podcasting and me just, you know, connecting and networking with a bunch of people and um, meeting this wonderful woman named CC. She's um, a teacher in Cleveland and, you know, telling, you know, stories about, you know, being a teacher and her telling stories about, you know, just the moments that matter the most is just when a student could just reach back to you and just, you know, say this or say that, you know, just the small moments, man. And um, it reminded me of Mr. Newman, um, Anthony Newman, man, was uh, 
was like a was like a, a stepdad to me, you know, and I can say he was, man. He was like a, a dad to everybody he coached to or worked with in River Terrace, man. You know, he was the coach of the basketball team. Whatever team he probably could have at that part, he was the coach of it, man. And, you know, Mr. Newman was just, he was fun. He was jolly, man. He was just so cool, you know. Um, and I, of course, you know, got into wrestling, you know, and knowing he was into wrestling too, it was just, you know, a beyond feeling, you know. And then, you know, he worked with um, the special ed children at River Terrace and, you know, just everything. And on the weekend sometimes, of course, when he would lead River Terrace to a defining victory, you know. And he would take the, you know, the, the team, you know, or maybe not the team, but, you know, some of the guys would come over. You know, for the weekend over his house, man, and chill with him, man. And a lot of guys, you know, River Terrace who, you know, knew Mr. Newman, know how he was and what, you know, such a great guy he was, man, and, and will always be missed. You know, when I when I found out the story, you know, about Mr. Newman and stuff, man, it was it was heartbreaking. You know, I was at work, you know, I worked at Gallery Place movie theaters and I was just sitting there, man, and a buddy, man, who uh, who uh, was very, very close to Mr. Newman and stuff, man. And he recognized me, what's going on, DeAndre? Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, what's going on, man? I remember you, man. It was like, yo, man, cause you know, I, he, knew I, he knew I used to love Mr. Newman and still, and still do, you know, and he was like, man, have you talked to Mr. Newman? I was like, nah, man, I ain't talked to him lately. And, man, yeah, he was in a um, car accident, you know? Yeah, and, you know, what went on is the driver, you know, was, you know, under the influence or whatnot, and the driver walked away good, but Mr. Newman, you know, he, you know, he, he's in a wheelchair now. I was like, what? Yeah, you know, he in a wheelchair now. But I got his number and everything, man. And, you know, I want you to, you know, reach out to him and stuff like that. Most definitely, you know, because, you know, we stayed in contact a little bit, you know, um, after I left River Tours and went to junior high school because we really never saw each other like that. And it was, you know, I got his phone number and I was like, I bet, man, I'm going to call Mr. Newman, man. This is it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, a, a fun conversation to chat with Mr. Newman. I ain't chat with him in a long time, man. And, you know, he kept up with me. He was on, you know, Facebook and, you know, just that, you know, hear his voice and everything like that. And also come to find out, you know, um, you know, he was in a wheelchair. And, you know, Mr. Newman was... You know, he was a teacher. Not only was he a teacher or a special ed teacher to um, a, a full of class, he was also a guy who, you know, some of the guys who were in the, and the girls who were in the wheelchair or whatnot looked up to him, man. And, man, Mr. Newman, you know, touched my heart. And, you know, before he passed, I remember talking to him. And he was trying to find his own place. He'd been on the waiting list for a long time trying to find his own place and come to find out that I, you know, moved from where I was at <clears throat> and I moved from where I was at and they called him and was like, yo, man, we got this place for you and everything, man, it's going to be awesome, you know, and it was where I was at, you know, it was exactly where I was at and it was like, nah, man, this ain't wheelchair accessible, man, where they going to put me at and everything, man, it was just, it's just so crazy and, um, you know, before everything, uh, you know, um, before he was, you know, I guess going to get into a new, new, new apartment and stuff and, um, you know, got the news that, you know, he passed away and stuff and growing up, man, you know, like he, he, he Mr. Newman was, you know, something special. You know, I talk about Mr. Newman was, you know, he meant a lot to me as, as a young age, you know. The fact that uh, that we uh, didn't stay in contact with one another, you know. And which we should have, or which I should have. But, uh,
I miss him, you know? And that was my homie, homie 100 grand, man. 100 grand, man, for real. Man, throughout school, man, and the journey, you know, in school, man, it, it was fun, you know, meeting, you know, real cool people and genuine people. And like I said, you know, in elementary school, I met my fiance, you know, who I'm engaged to today. And uh, right after elementary school, you know, and, and um, they always say, man, hey, the person shows you who they are the first time you saw them meet them. <laughs> yeah, man, my fiance, man, who, who, I, who I'm with right now, she broke up with me in elementary school, man. Yeah, she broke up with me in elementary school, somebody else, um, I think she was into or whatnot, you know, he came up to me and was like, yeah, she don't want to be with you no more, and I'm like, well, damn, she couldn't come up there and tell me, though, like, and, you know, fast forward from elementary, man, because elementary, man, was just, you know, it was lit, it, it, it was everything, man, and, you know, from there, I, I you know, go to, go to Shaw, I went to Shaw Junior High School, man, and, man, oh, man, Still lit. And come to find out, you know, my fiance, she go to that school too. So basically she say I follow her. I say she followed me, even though she was a great ahead of me though. But um man, school journey, man, was, was, was life. You know, especially coming into um junior high school, man, and you know, trying to learn everything. Of course, you know, um me coming into Dunbar, I mean not Dunbar, but me coming me coming into Shaw. At the time, you know, school was, you know, challenging in a way for me too because, you know, I was I was never that type of person that would want to raise my hand and go up to the in front of the classroom and, and say what I wanted to say, you know, I would kind of like sit back and and be the shy one, you know, like like I said to my man Laquan John, you know, I, I, I no, don't don't choose me, don't ask me to read nothing. You feel me? Because it's you know, you just be so nervous. You might be in a classroom uh, with a, 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 a girl that you might have a crush on, and you want to read, and then you got the ignorant students in the background that want to make fun of you and stuff. And you know, it's just it's just so much, man. And. You know, I, I say, man, to those who've been bullied before or in school or in life, you know, um, stop, st you know, who've been the bully and stop the bullying because it's not cool. And those who've been bullied, man, like, talk to someone and it's going to be all right, man, because those who always seems like they, you know, get bullied or get, you know, played around with or messed around with or in school just because of they may be... Um, you know, disability or lack of, of other or whatever, you know, like it's, it's crazy, man. But man, school, school was cool. And, and you know, like I, I said, man, I had a um, really um, bad eczema growing up. So, man, I didn't, you know, at the time where eczema was, man, kicking my ass. And when I'm saying kicking my ass, man, because for, for, for me, for those men who have eczema, I would scratch more at night. You know, I would scratch at night, and when I scratch at night, you know, by the morning time, I'm in pain. You know, I'm in, I'm, I'm literally in pain. You feel me? So I, and you know, and I had it worse on my legs, and I had it worse on to my arms, and I had it on my arms so bad to where, at times, to, for me to extend my arm all the way out would hurt because I was scratch, and you know, it'd be cuts on my arms or whatnot, and. You know, it's just, you know, man, it, it was just long, long days at times, man. Long, long days that turned into long, long months, man. Just trying to figure out, man. And just trying to figure out stuff. Man, one thing, man, growing up, you know, besides, you know, I think every kid got the cartoons or, you know, got what they, you know, enjoy in life, you know. Um, uh, you know, like I said, whether it's cartoons or whatever it is, man, for me, um, I didn't know what I, what, what, what was it, you know, because I always loved it like buses. I always was fascinated with like buses for some reason, you know, <laughs> you know, I always was like, Ooh, like, look at that bus, you know, and, then, you know, my mom, you know, and she get on the Metro bus, I'd be like, bus, bus. But, um, for some reason, you know, um, we had a family friend over, over at the house one day and, he asked me a question, 
You know, we were on the balcony chilling. I remember it was warm outside. I definitely remember that. Hey, man, you know, you watch wrestling? Man, no, I don't know what wrestling it is. You know, what? what is that? You know, I'm young. I'm like eight years old. Nah, I don't know what that is. I know what football is. I know what basketball is, you know, and, and I don't really, you know, nah, I don't know what it is. So we go in, we watch it, man, and I just say, man, this is the beautiful stuff ever in the world. The beautiful stuff ever in the world, man. And from there, I was hooked. Man, my cousin, you know, my cousin used to watch it with his dad, you know, growing up and stuff like that, you know, in the WCW days. But man, it, it was, uh, it, I took it to a whole nother level, man, as a little kid, man. It was just the larger than life characters, man, who came through the screen, man. You know, I was on a podcast talking with a guy, you know, um, Scrady the Flow, shout him out, man, uh, who from uh, Quebec, Canada. Um, and it was just talking about, uh, just remember how the guys, and you know, back in the days, man, when you were watching it, man, especially at least when I was coming in, you know, guys like The Rock, guys like Stone Cold, The Undertaker, Kane, Triple H, you know, Chris Jericho, all these type of, you know, larger than life characters, man, made you believe and love what was going on. You feel me? It was the mystery. It was the mystique of these characters that, you know, you want to know more of. And, you know, I think that I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I think that was the the moment and that was it that kind of like just drove me straight into wrestling. You feel me? And I just carried on it until uh, adult year, adult age, you know, as I am today, <laughs> you know, um. My favorite wrestler growing up, man, was The Rock, man. If you smell, you can know your own. Shut your mouth, you jabroni. The Rock is going to take this foot. He's going to turn it sideways, shine it up real good, and stick it straight up your candy ass. <laughs> like, man, The Rock was so good. I remember like a pay-per-view of 2000, man. I had the whole promo back. I, I said it. I knew it all together, man. I rewinded that tape so many times. It's WrestleMania 2000, man. But, uh, yeah, man, wrestling played a big, big part in my life, and a lot of people don't even know and probably will come up with and just be like, oh, man, you just like wrestling. No, man, wrestling played a big part in my life, you know, and I think, you know, without wrestling, man, without wrestling, I don't know what I would be. Well, well, well. Another episode in the books. Well, as I take you guys on this journey with me, man, from my city, D.C., and throughout my journey and my life, sit tight, man. It's going to be a good one.